Hello, everybody. You have tuned into the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, Sergeant Rich Myers with the Indiana State Police District 52 Public Information Office. We thank you for joining us today. We thank the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids for a continued support of this show. And we thank Tom Trial for putting us on uh, YouTube each and every week and standing with us behind the camera. I've got three guests today, two human, one non-human with us today, but this is going to be a great, great show and something, a great event that's coming up. I got uh, Master Trooper Steve Kaler. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. I'm glad to have you back with me. Steve and I worked our, together down in Putnamville a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, around 2000. <laughs> <laughs> a few yeah, years ago. A couple of years ago. And his uh, lovely wife, Nick, Nikki. Hi. Very glad to meet you. Thanks for nice coming to meet in. You. Appreciate you coming in here with us. And Nikki has come up with a great idea. We're going to give her all the credit. Is that all right, that's, Steve? That's It's all her idea. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she's come up with a great idea that we want to promote and get out there for the people that something's come up that's going to raise some money for some bullet resistant vests for our canine friend here uh, throughout the state police. But uh, specifically, this is Nikon that's with us today, and he's doing a great job of uh, being a good boy. But Steve, tell us a little bit. Uh, what year did you start with the state police? I graduated the academy in 1995. Okay. Uh, so in December, I'll have 20 years on. Um, they, uh, I got assigned to the Lowell District out of the academy. Uh, spent a few years up there and transferred down to Putnamville. Uh, spent, I think, four or five years down there. and uh, That's where you and I worked together? That's, yeah, that's where we worked together. Um, when I first got sent up to Lowell, I met my lovely wife, Nikki, and we got married, and we, uh, she had some uh, desires to move back up to where she was from. so we. And if she's got the desires, you move, right? I, I move. That's right. Like I said, <laughs> keep them happy. That's right. Um, but we moved back up to the Lowell District, and I've been there since 2005, I believe. Um, been doing various things up there. I, I was in the Mustang for seven years. Um, okay. Always, always interested in the canines, but I had just started the Mustang when the program right. came back, so I didn't really put in for it then but the mustang it was getting old all right like me and uh <laughs> we were i was looking for something a little different and there was an opportunity to get in the canine program so i asked my wife and she she was all for it backed me 100 percent. so i put in for it and we started we i picked nikon up in april late april okay and we started a 14-week academy me and nine other troops and uh Spent 14 weeks in Indianapolis away from her. <laughs> she had a nice vacation. Uh, and uh, we graduated July 16th. Okay. Started working back up at Lowell. And Nikon is a uh, German Shepherd? He is a German Shepherd and Belgian Malinois mix. Okay. Uh, they started crossing those two breeds of the working dogs um, to uh, help with some of the Shepherd health issues like cancers and okay. hip dysplasia. Uh, so they came up with this crossbreed, and he, it seems to be working out really well. And he seems so docile. Yeah, that's they they merged the shepherd with the Malinois because the Malinois is a little yeah more he's hyper. off the wall, isn't he? Yeah, and <laughs> it, it it seems to give them a, a healthy, mild tempered, but very workable. When it's time to work, it's time to when work. It's time to work. He's ready to go, and he think everything. You know, when we train them for those 14 weeks, it's all operant conditioning. Everything's reward-based. Uh, everything that we taught him was a game. So mm -hmm. anything he does, he's ready to play. He thinks we're playing, Good. even though he's doing work for the state. Well, Nikki, tell us about this idea you come up with and where it struck you and what you did. Well, um, when I was sitting in the graduation ceremony for the dogs and their handlers, um, they were talking about a lack of funding um, for the department to get the bulletproof stab proof vest for the dogs. And um, I just opened a brand new business. Actually, my grand opening was the week after Steve left for training <laughs> of my new business. <laughs> so I knew with the business I had an opportunity to reach out and have more access to try to do some fundraising to get the vest for the dogs. And I also had the very unique opportunity that I've been working with Crystal Sand from Lighthouse Events 
and marketing on the Hero Half Marathon, which is a beautiful half marathon up through the Indiana um, Dunes National Lakeshore in Chesterton. And I'm the race director for her. And we were going to be giving the funds to the um, State Police um, Memorial Fund. And once I heard that the dogs didn't have vests, I text messaged Crystal while we were still sitting in the graduation and said, do I have your okay that we can give the funds to the dogs for vests instead? And she said, absolutely 100% behind you. So um, I went up and I'm not a very shy person. So I went up and I introduced myself um, to Superintendent Carter. And I had just said, hey, I have a business and I have this opportunity with this half marathon. We could raise the funds to purchase the dog's vest. So each dog is protected. Um, For me, it's very near and dear because I know Nikon would do everything to make sure that Steve is safe while he is on duty. And that's a huge part of it. But Nikon is also, even though he is a police dog, right. he is still our baby in our house. Um, and my son loves him. I love him. Steve loves him. Um, he's just such a good dog. And I think all the dogs would do anything for their handlers. Right. So to me, it was just about keeping those dogs safe and making sure they're protected. Well, he's a partner. Yes. He's he's a, he's a partner out there and he's uh, doing his work. And uh, yeah, you want to do everything that we can to make sure that they're safe and they continue to be safe out there. So the the running of the vines is that what i understand it running is running vines is the winery no, i own but the marathon is called the running of the vines is that no correct? the marathon the half marathon is called the hero half okay okay so um it's the half marathon and 10k okay. so um for people that like to run they can either do the 13.1 or if they're not quite ready to do a half marathon yet and they want something a little bit shorter they can do the 10k which is 6.2 miles um it starts right at the pavilion um at the national lakeshore right there in chesterton they'll go from the pavilion down out through the park onto the calumet trail down up to beverly shores and loop back into the park again to finish all the finishers get a medal um they get a nice um race t-shirt and um they'll be supporting the state police canines is this something that's been going on for several this is the third year for the hero half marathon okay this is my second year involved with it as the race director so are you a runner i am a runner i am so steve Yes. All right. Well, good deal. So you're both going to be involved with it then. Yes. uh, I won't be running it, but uh, we'll be out there volunteering and letting people see see the dogs. I think there's a couple more from my class that are coming up to volunteer and let people meet the the pups and see what they're help donating money for. How many runners do you have? Uh, Um, Currently, we're last year we had about 350. So we're hoping to hit that level again this year. Um, We had to change the date this year um, due to some requests. And so we changed the date to September 27th. And the only downside of that is that is the Chicago Half Marathon Day at the same time. So we are losing a little bit of our participants to the Chicago Half. But we're trying to remind local runners, you know, to run locally, support a good local cause that's right right here in their state. And it's a beautiful course, and you don't have all the traffic to fight. There you go. Exactly. Get in and get out. That's right. So this is going to happen on September 27th, uh, the Dune State Park, address 1600 North 25th East, 25 East, 1600 North 25 East Chesterson. Race begins at 8 o'clock, and that's Central Standard Time, uh, with announcements starting at 730. Um How much do you know the prices of this? Yes, um, they can register right now. We actually have a coupon code. If you're doing the 10K, you can get $5 off by um, punching in coupon code HERO5, and that will bring your registration down to um, 45. And then if you're doing the half marathon, it's 75. And with the coupon code HERO10, it will knock $10 off the price of the half marathon entry. Excellent. And a website? The website is um, herohalf.com, or you can also go to www.runningfinds.com, and the link is on both of those sites. We also have Facebook and Twitter and Instagram for both events, and they can click those links to register. Excellent. Well, again, you're listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, Sergeant Rich Myers, and we're talking to Master Trooper Steve Kaler, his uh, partner, Nikon. And and explain to us again, what does Nikon mean? Uh, Nikon is a... Native American Shawnee word for partner. So Great. when when we had the opportunity to name our uh, our dogs, I thought that with my Shawnee heritage, that would be a, a neat name for him. Yeah, it is an excellent name. That's a great name. And his lovely wife here, Nikki. Nikon, has he, you just kind of got started. Yes. 
Have you had any experiences that you want to relate uh, so far? We sort of got lucky our first month out and got involved with the DEA raid on a, on a house. And we used uh, Nikon to help sniff out some of the, some of the illegal contraband that they had in there. And we ended up finding 1,060 pounds of marijuana, a kilo of cocaine, a half kilo of heroin, we see seventy-five thousand dollars in cash and thirteen weapons, including some wow. automatic weapons. Wow! So yeah, he got he got pretty lucky on <laughs> he, that. <laughs> he got some kibbles and bits that night, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> but again, and and we're kind of going back to your training again. He's playing, he, right? He's, it, it was all a game, you know, and you know it's reward based. So when he finds those illegal substances, he gets his little tennis ball and he thinks he's on top of the world. So, now, is he uh, what we call dual trained? So yes. he, protection dog also? He is a uh, full patrol, so he does all the, the bite work as well. Um, no, you can't tell, but uh, <laughs> he does all the bite work. He's uh, certified in tracking, you know, whether it be a suspect or a lost child, lost person. Okay. Um, he can do building search, area search, article search, uh, say that somebody throws a gun right. in a field and he can go out and find it. Um, he is young. That's why he's a little <laughs> rambunctious still here. But He's just uh, showing his tricks right now. He can do a somersault. <laughs> he's certified through uh, IPWATA, so he had to pass all those certification tests. And, you know, our trainers, you know, Sergeant Wade, um, Trooper Waters, Trooper um, Dockery, they all came down, you know, every day. They they dedicated themselves. their time and themselves and their family time to come down and help train these 10 dogs. And, you know, all the other dogs in my in my academy class, you know, they're not mine, but, you know, you still build that bond. Right. So right. when she had the opportunity to protect all of the, all 10 of ours, it was a no-brainer <laughs> so how much are each one of these vests going to cost nikki each vest is 750 dollars, okay. and i was lucky enough that um sergeant knox put me in contact with vested pdp and um i had contacted her and when i told her what we were doing and what we had raised so far to date she said it's not a problem how many vests do you need and i told her 10 and she said i'll make it happen and you just donate whatever you can don't worry about it. So Amazing. it is still important for us to try to raise up to that yeah. 7500 to cover our dog's vest because that way it's there for the next dog that needs one. And we also have five more dogs that just started this month in the state police canine unit. So they're going to need vests coming up. So we don't want to just take those 10 and right. not give it back to her to get more. Now, how can someone contact you if they see this program or just want to donate if they can't get to the race but they're they're a canine lover or interested in donating absolutely they can contact me at nicole n-i-c-o-l-e at runningvines.com and if they go on to there they can send me an email and it'll go directly to me or they can call me at 219-390-9463 great well that's excellent information now how does the vest cover is it Kind of like ours, is it Velcro base and stuff and just yes. fit around them? It'll fit from their neck all the way down to the base of their tail. Okay. Um, it wraps around them. Uh, it's going to take a little getting used to for them, obviously, because it is extra weight. But it, it's uh, bulletproof, but it, it's also stab proof. Okay. Uh, they've been finding that a lot of the canines that are killed on duty are actually getting stabbed rather than shot. So okay. we, it's an extra level of protection for them that costs a little more, but... In, in the end, you know, yes, yes, it's, it's definitely worth it because he, like she said, he would do anything. You know, we're sending these dogs in harm's way. Yeah, and they a lot of times willingly. they're the ones to go in first. Right, they're they're doing it willingly just because. Yeah, they want to help us. Yeah. <laughs> well, he had a great uh, experience with his first out it sounds like he oh, get, yeah. <laughs> got a lot of good and and he looks like he's uh he's uh, craves attention so, <laughs> like i said he's young but uh it, he's from poland so what's your life expectancy or their job expectancy they they're required to do a, a minimum of <laughs> six years but um usually they they're trying to get you know, until they're about 10 years old, okay. eight to 10 years old is what they're looking for. All right. Well, folks, we've run out of time. I appreciate you guys all being here. It sounds like he's ready to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, 
He's so just we'll, trying to show you all his tricks. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> well, Steve, Nikki, thank you so much for coming down. And thank you for your great, important work that you're doing to get our dogs uh, protection for them. Absolutely. Well, again, you've been listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm Sergeant Rich Myers with the District 52 Public Information Office. Running Vines Hero Half Marathon. Uh, make sure that you uh, get in touch with these folks and support that worthwhile cause. We appreciate you listening to us. It's going to be Sunday, September 27th, beginning at 8 o'clock of a Dune State Park. A great, great event. Get get in shape and have a good time doing it and uh, have a good event. Roadshow out. Appreciate you listening. Bye-bye.